Are you looking for affordable office space in Marion? The professional building located at 685 Delaware Avenue is the place for you. For more information, call 740-383-6803. Office space is now available. Again, telephone number 740-383-6803. Hey, Scott Spears here with you for another episode of Scott Spears Now. Tonight we examine the Sylvia Brown case. Kind of sad, as you all know now, Sylvia Brown predicted that Amanda Beery was dead in 2004 to her mother. Amanda Beery's mother died in 2006, and now we know that Amanda Beery has lived, questioning uh, Sylvia Brown's psychic abilities now. We're joined tonight by the Reverend Dr. Lady Bishop, voodoo high priestess, to get her thoughts on Sylvia Brown and delve into the world of voodoo and find out what it's all about, as well as the Reverend Dr. Lady Bishop. We go to Arizona in a mall to talk to the Reverend Dr. Lady Yo. Bishop. This is Scott Spears. And tonight, we're going to discuss psychic Sylvia Brown's false claim to Amanda Berry's mother that her daughter was dead in 2004. As we all know now, Amanda Berry was found alive May the 6th in Ohio. Berry's mother sadly died in 2006. Joining us is voodoo high priestess from Skype in Arizona, the Reverend Dr. Lady Bishop, and we're going to discuss a lot of other things while we have the Reverend with us. Dr. Bishop, how are you? Oh, God bless you folks. I'm just counting my blessings and uh, just hello to all of you out there in cyber world. Everything now, is fine here in Phoenix. The weather is good, not too hot, not too cold, just the way it should be. And how are you, Mr. Scott? I'm doing well, and you look great. I love the, uh, the the clothing you have on. Have you always dressed like that? Have you always had that flair? Uh, you know, voodoo priestess, we have to have our big hats or our heads wrapped or my doctrine robe on, and I just love those big hats. And I think the girl, she really likes those. Have My mother wore a big one, so I do the same thing. Well, you look great, and I'm glad to have you here uh, on the program. I do want to start, though, talking about Amanda Berry. What a terrible situation. What do you make of this uh, story, Dr. Bishop? Well, it was very, very sad, and uh, I'm not going to talk against uh, Mrs. Uh, oh, what's her name? I'm trying to think. I can't think right now. Brown. I'm so excited. Yes, Miss Sylvia Brown. Uh, Miss Sylvia Brown is uh, a I've never seen her read anybody before. And people need to know the difference between getting a reading and getting a consultation. Uh, if you are looking for a reading, the person doesn't ask you, uh, well, what do you want to know? How do you want to know? What do you want to know? And Miss Brown, she always asks people, well, what do you want to know? And things like that. But she doesn't like voodoo, voodoo people, but I love her uh, for what she does do. But she has had many inaccurate prediction, predictions on people that were still living. I think if I'm not mistaken, about a year, in the last year, year and a half, CNN had an hour long special about her incorrectness. Now I have the gift of seership and I like to read the cards also. I don't go into missing persons and things, but that is just, uh, I just, uh, there's no words for it. And I love the city of Cleveland because they made me who I am today. And I was there before I went into New Orleans. But no, that's uh, that's not. And this woman, to my understanding, was on the Montel Williams show. And Miss Sylvia Brown gave her that information. And again, Miss Sylvia Brown can also be a police psychic that gathers information. So I really don't know it. I have nothing to say bad about her, but. You know, this is very, it, people need to look into it. Uh, uh, Dr. Bishop, in your opinion, as somebody who can read people, who can see uh, into the future, what do you think of her inaccuracy on this, though? Well, I, you know, uh, you get what you pay for, and everybody on television is not always famous, and uh I just don't, I'm like the kids there. One of the girls, uh, 
it was her sister, I think it was, or they were good friends, and it was her father that did that. I'm just like him. I've never heard anything like this one. But, uh, you know, you need to, uh, like people, they don't like a lot of things I say because it's truth. I don't dress it up when I do read. I give it to you in plain words. And I have an old saying, when they meet, when they make, make it to this ministry, people have tried everything there is to try it, but God's totally true way. And uh, they want, well, I want you to give me a sample. I want you to do that. First of all, if you're a reader, you don't ask people what they want. As I said previously here, you just, I really don't need your first name uh, and just give you what the Spirit of God gives me at that time. And uh, like I say, I don't know what to say, but uh, I don't think that if this wasn't true, that CNN wouldn't keep following this up about Sylvia Brown and they've never said I was accurate or inaccurate and they've, I've always been in good standing uh, with people and some people don't like me because of what I do say, but then six months, a year, or two years later when I come through the town, they said, lady, I wish I would have really been able to listen to you. Sir, I'm just lost for words. How do you feel about this, Mr. Scott? Well, it's interesting, and, and my thought is, as somebody who does this sort of thing, not exactly what Sylvia does, but, but certainly in the realm, do you think it's hurt your profession? Well, sir, I'm an individual, and... Uh, Miss uh, Sylvia Brown is an individual too. So I don't know how people will judge it, but no, it doesn't hurt me because whatever God wants me to have, there's enough sheep out here for all of us and he will send me who he wants me to have or whatever. And I am very strict and the reason I'm strict is because I was taught by those Franciscan nuns and priests from kindergarten through the 12th grade. So I don't know any other way to give you things except some to holler, scream at you, whatever it takes to get you to wake up. And people have to understand if you want a reading, you don't tell people anything. You wait till they read you. Then after they read you, then you can ask questions. And I must say myself, most of the time when I read, well, just about all of the time when I read people, they they're so they want to be talkative when they come. I don't allow it. And when I get through, they can't think of anything. And my readings usually take, it takes me anywhere from, I like to do an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, when I'm just out in the different restaurants and stuff, uh, reading for people uh, at the restaurants, it takes me, I can't do anybody under 25 or 30 minutes because I want people to feel different when they get through than uh, trying to rush through. So I don't do a lot of private parties because they want, five or 10 minutes that you're working with people's lives. And this is what Sylvia Brown, she was working with people's lives and to tell someone something like that. And then supposedly their mother died about three years ago and they feel that she died not only from the ailment, but mostly from a broken heart. And sir, I've never seen that much stuff going on in one neighborhood and nobody knew. Well, the, the problem here, Dr. Bishop, I think that people are having uh, is that this mother is not here now to see that the uh, child is alive. She's been gone six, uh, seven years now. It is. She died in 2006, and she died thinking that she was dead because of what Sylvia said, which beckons this question. As somebody who does this, obviously what Sylvia said was inaccurate. We know that now. So did she make it up or did she really see that she was dead? Because obviously she was not. Well, like I say, everybody that says they're a reader or a prophetess or have the gift of she seership, uh, they, uh, I just, sir, I'm just lost for words. I just can't say anything. I, the spirit is not bringing me anything, but, uh, you know, in due season, everything comes to an end. There's a long road that don't end and a strong wind that don't stop blowing. So one day people will finally wake up instead of hearing a famous name and uh, just accept what's being said. But, sir, this is, uh, I just don't know what to say. That's all. And I keep saying that. I, this, it even, uh, it shocked me. With your... but it's not about the reading part about Sylvia Brown. No, that doesn't uh, bother me because I know she doesn't read. If you read, you don't have to ask people questions and what do they want to know. 
I yes. do will be able to tell them. So I guess my question is, and, and I hate to put it so uh, uh, pointed here, but because of what you just said, do you believe that Sylvia Brown does not possess this gift being what you've seen? Well, like I said, I think she's a police psychic and police psychics gather information. And when you gather information, you help other people. So whatever she's doing, she's helpful to that type of group. And then the police didn't want her to say anything to them either because they say she's been very inaccurate. Do you feel she's inaccurate? Pardon? Do you feel she's inaccurate? Uh, sir, I've never thought about it and never prayed on it because I don't pray on those kind of things or do something unless the people is, are giving me something for my ministry so I can support my veterans and uh, the those that have served their country and are serving their country. So I don't have time to run around and see if she's this or that, but the few things, the few times I've seen her, she was, uh, like I said, she is not reading. And Mr. Montel Williams, most honorable gentleman, nice man. Uh, they had a thing going there uh, together where he didn't want any other psychic or any other seer or prophetess or like that to be on his program. And uh, and the reason, another reason that made think you she was a police psychic just gathering information is because Mr. Montel Williams had one of the highest clearances that a person can have in the United States with the government. I so I really don't know. That's all I can say. And I'm not saying anything bad about the woman. And I love her because God said we have to love everybody, but we don't have to like everybody. Now, liking her is a different thing, but loving her, yes, because she is one of the persons that God has created. Uh, and I think something should be done uh, to Miss. Uh, she needs to have a shakedown or whatever, or an investigation that they can go through all of us and uh, see what you're doing and not doing. Uh, the final question on the Sylvia Brown case would be, uh, Dr. Bishop, knowing that you can see and, and see spirits and things of that nature, the mother's been gone for six years. Do you believe that she knows the daughter's alive now? Well, sir, I'm not going to tell you something that is not true. Don't nobody know what happens to anybody after they go into the next dimension. So I don't know whether she knows or not, but I know like over in Matthew chapter 22 in the Bible, if you read that whole chapter a little bit toward the middle of it, it tells you that we do not know one another when we leave to go to the next dimension. We're not going to be a family. And it's plain, it's plain, it's plain worded in the King James Version, the Living Version, not the New, the new Living Version and the New International Living Version. I use the Living Version, but when serious things are stated like that, I go to the King James because a lot of people, oh, I just, I don't believe nothing but the King James. And most people read the King James and if when you read and pray and you don't understand what you're reading and praying, you're just reading and praying in vain. So, and, uh, this is something that they say, but over there, it was the story about the woman. She, she, she married her first husband. He died. They didn't have any children. Then, he, then she went to the next oldest brother, and she went all the way down. And the Pharisees asked Jesus when he was ministering, well, whose wife will she be when he gets to heaven? And he says, there is no marriage in heaven. And all I can do is tell you what the word of God and what they say. And sir, I don't know what happens beyond the next dimension. Mm. And yes, I do have constant uh, visits by spirits, but mine are not materialization. When I was younger, I had that. I was very afraid. And I asked God to take that materialization where you can actually see the spirit away from me. And then I've been praying for the last three or four years to ask God to please give me that that. Uh, that gift back and the person that speaks through me is honorable john edgar hoover and that's where my information that i channel when the lord gives that to me to channel through now, uh, john so you can find somebody that can tell you what her mother knows i don't think they'd be telling you the truth so now now john edgar hoover channels through you yes john edgar hoover and that's been written for years and years 
uh, in different articles, international articles and things, and that is the person I chose to channel through me so that I can have the correct information. And then if I don't have the correct information or can't give you something, then it may be a year down the road, maybe five and 10 years, and the Lord has showed me something, and I would call back and get in touch with the people and tell them, this is what the Spirit told me. Now, is J. Edgar Hoover with you all the time? Uh, when need to be for, you know, channeling or what I need to say so I won't say the wrong thing to end up to be sued and put in the jailhouse and all that. He is there, and Mr. Hoover is a very, uh, he, was a very he was a straight man. And he said, one of the things he said that made that drew me to him to pray, to ask the Lord to let that man talk to me so I can tell the people the truth and where people will have respect for me at the same time. And he said one thing that, that it was, he said, don't put anything before the Bible. And nobody never thought Hoover was a religious man. And the other thing he says, I'm going to bring all the enemies right here to America, and I'm never going to leave America to bring them here, and then we're going to take them off one by one. And that's why all these people are here now, all our terrorists and everything else, and they are going to be taken off one by one because they're on the welfare, they're getting all kind of food stamps and everything else, so the government knows just where to look for them, and there's going to be a mighty change over this next year to seven years and, and, what and cleaning up America. What kind of change will that be? First of all, uh, you can look at your Medicare. It's being cut off. You got people got five or six uh, scooter chairs and haven't used any of them. And their house wasn't even big enough for them to have a scooter and their house. All that stuff is being cut off and everybody is subject all of us are going to have to work together whether we want to or not even including miss sylvia brown she's going to be out all of us going to be working and yes it makes it very hard uh when people class you as a psychic and you're this trying to compare you to other people and anything you always well she wasn't cheap but anything cheap is not good and anything good is not cheap so uh, people have to understand, and if you have to go to the psychic or whatever you call them, and you want to tell them all your business, they're supposed to tell you, and that's the main thing. You're, they're supposed to tell you, and there's a difference between being a psychic, a spiritualist, and a seer. I have the gift of seership, and I came all the way down from being a watchman, which warns people, all the way up then to being a prophetess, and now I have the gift of seership and people don't know what that is. And if they really want a detailed uh, description of the group of seership, they need to look to the Book of Mormons. And in there, they have a section, if they look in the back, it says seership. And they look that up. There's two whole chapters, about five or six pages on what a seer can do. And sometimes people may think I'm rude because first of all, I don't want to talk to you until after we have discussed whatever it is you want to see. And, and the Lord has blessed me to go a little bit further by making herbs and uh, mixing uh, ritual baths and oils and things for people where they can get some help. And my thing is if they're oppressed, depressed, just in a mess, sick, broke, fixed, all of that, problems of love, they need to come to get it straightened out. And then you're not going to get it straightened out in one day. You didn't get in the situation in one day. And no, I do not work for free because I have these veterans that need help. And like I said, all these people that have served and are serving their country. And now the police are so scared. If you move one finger, they already done shot you 99 times. And they have a reason to be because people just do not have any respect here in America anymore. They don't have respect for anybody or anything. But all of that is going to be taken care of, and they can't take care of it until they get you broke. And the government is doing real good over this last three or four years of going into getting people broke. And those, uh, Mr. Honorable Romney, uh, uh, Honorable uh, President Clinton, and Mr. Bush, when they were going through this uh, last year trying to win the campaigns and stuff all of them nobody heard that man said we have plenty of jobs and that we're going to we're going to have to retrain all of you people they don't listen now they will come 
they will not be uh, what you call consistent. You go to the restaurants now, the food is not even consistent. People are just troubled now, and they need real help, what is real. What do you make of President Obama? You didn't mention him there in, in that group. Oh, I didn't say Honorable Obama. I'm very sorry. Mr. Obama can't do no more than what he is led to do because all those laws were made by Honorable Father Bush, Mr. Honorable Clinton, President, and uh, baby President Bush, Honorable. They, those laws were not going to go into effect until 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016. And they blame him. They don't need to blame that man. This uh, America was broke before they saw Mr. Obama. But one thing I can say about black people, me being a colored woman, is the fact that people know black people can work with no money. How they can work with no money, I don't know. But I do know one thing, that Honorable Senator Ed Kennedy, before he died, and the Eisenhower grandchildren, they one of them was at the Democratic Convention, and that first time that Obama went in there, was going to be in office, and uh, he told and uh, he told them, Obama is what we need at this time, and you have to listen when them policemen said they come at this point in time, we're not going to get you for aid. And he, they all said that at that point in time because there was so much, we had so many terrorists here that nobody, there was no white man that could take that office without being killed and getting everybody else killed here in America. But Honorable Obama, he is an educated man. Uh, he can handle what he's supposed to be doing. And that was one thing nobody wanted. They talk about never had a black president and all that kind of, who would have the most honorable Jesse Jackson and most honorable uh, Sharpton would want them as a president leading America. They, one of them, some of them didn't have the charisma and they didn't have the education, but they were good men, but that was their part at that time. And uh, so that's what my motto is, truth cannot be found until the lie is recognized. And that's what's going to happen no matter what you do, anything you do, it's uncovered. Anything you do in the dark will come to the light. And I think everybody can see that. All these tornadoes and floods and things and these different cities and stuff, you need to look and see what are those people doing in those cities? What have they done? What laws have they passed? But sir, there's going to be a major change and there's going to come a day when you have a push button telephone, you have a television and a, and a, 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 a push-button telephone, a television, and a computer, you're not going to even be able to leave your house. Won't be no need. And they're getting ready to change these jobs. They're going to, if the man tell you he want it done that way, we got all these soldiers coming home next year. And Kmart is, a, not Kmart, but Walmart already said, we're going to hire 50,000 veterans. These people don't think the ones that are working there now, what's going to happen to them? Do they think? No, but it'll be all under control, sir. Believe me, Mr. Hoover and his boys and that new Homeland Security, they don't care who your mama is, what color you is, and how much money you got. They picking people up and locking them up. So you believe that people are being locked up for no good reason? The what now? Uh, people are being locked up for no... No. No, they're not. When you are sinning and you're robbing people and carrying on, you need to be locked up. And a lot of people, they weren't locked up back in the, they couldn't lock them up, but Homeland Security is locking up everybody. And if and as like the people say that little joke, it says, if people tell you they're not troubled now and they're not worried, you call Homeland Security because they want to see those kind of people. And even to the point they was getting ready to take my school to chair for me. And I'm a worker and my husband died in the war over in Vietnam. And I worked all my life uh, to have a, uh, to uh, be able to have my school to chair. I, I understand. Now, now, Dr. Bishop, I do want to get into the voodoo part of this. For those people who don't understand, what is a short definition of the word voodoo? Voodoo is the mixing of herbs and it was for healing. But the people say it's black magic, which you have a good side and a bad side. 
once I said it's all good because that's what I did. But voodoo is mixing herbs and helping you to get discipline where you can know what to do and what not to do. Teachings and a lot of praying. There's a lot of praying in voodoo. And if you don't want the prayers, people can give you a ritual and tell you to go bury this and do that. If they don't give you the prayer to go with it, it's it's not going to work. If you're going to take your doorpost leading outside your home, some people have horseshoes up there. Some people have the 91st Psalms up there or St. Michael. If you don't pray, if you got the 91st Psalms up over the door and don't pray it, it's not going to help you. And then you have to learn how to pray. You have to be taught. And this is the same thing those men say. They are getting ready to reteach everybody in America. Huh. So voodoo is just helping you get on the right track, getting disciplined, and helping you get out of trouble if you're in trouble. And it don't come cheap, sir. And how were you taught, Reverend Bishop? How was I taught? Yes. I was taught first of all by my mother and father then when i was four years old they let those franciscan nuns and priests handle me as i told you before from kindergarten through the 12th grade so i was trying those nuns they would holler at you hit you with a, whatever but i thank god for them today and i thank god for all those licks my mama was putting on me because i wasn't even doing nothing and i thank god because i wouldn't be able to take all this that goes on out here now and I, with the help of the Lord, I have been very strong. And one of the things I'm getting ready to do now, I'm going to talk to the Internal Revenue because I want to see the detailed difference between a 501C and a foundation. And I'm starting one for Honorable John Edgar Hoover because Honorable John Edgar Hoover was killed. He didn't die in his sleep on May 1st. And May 1st is Communist Day, and that is one of the things that he was always talking about, communism. Them people killed that man. And I want to raise enough money that I can get him unearthed, exhumed, or whatever proper word that they want you to see, and test that man with DNA testing. That man was a good man, and he didn't do nothing but take pictures of people that were doing things they didn't have no business doing. And our Republican Party, it's a shame now the way they talked about Honorable Christie, talking about he's fat and he this and that. And if they do not, and this is a prediction, sir, if they do not get Crispy, Christie to run when the next election come on the Republican ticket, they're going to have Democrat rule for 12 years in a row. And it was stated but when Obama came out there, we have a black newspaper in San Antonio called the San Antonio Observer. That was the only paper, and that was January, and they didn't have the, uh, the uh, convention until August. I was the first psychic to speak out that Obama would be a two-term president. God, God gave that to me through the Honorable John Edgar Hoover. So the John Edgar Hoover is like what people would say, the Holy Ghost or the Spirit or whatever. That's what I choose to name mine because I don't play. Okay. And if you're playing, I'm not the one that people need to come see. But if you want to have help and get things changed with the true power of God, then you can come and see me. And like I said, it's not cheap. Anything cheap is not good, and anything good is not cheap. Okay, now, now, you made two uh, important statements there, Reverend Bishop. You're saying, just to clarify, that if Governor Chris Christie does not get the Republican nomination in the next presidential election, that there will be 12 years of Democratic rule. And four of those are counted with the one that Obama is in now, yes. Will Hillary Clinton run in the next election? Well... Miss Clinton, back there in that same paper there, but they have it, Mr. Ali of the, that owns those papers there in San Antonio, they can get copies, it's written. Mrs. Obama, Ms., not as Mrs. Obama, but the most honorable Miss Clinton, she said, do you believe that the heavens are gonna open up and they, they going and the celestial choir is gonna come singing? It's a wonder the Lord didn't strike her with lightning then, that most honorable lady. And then there's certain, God has certain laws, and all of them is in his book, and all the people. We have 94 versions of the Bible. Now, when you learn the Bible, you need to learn on the one version, then you can go back and get it. And it's saying different, no. If Mr. Christie, he is the only, all these men sleeping with other women, and the governor got, a, got rid of his wife, then a girlfriend, now she's a, a 
uh, 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 engaged and all that kind of stuff. And Mr. Hoover, he ain't had nothing on nobody but people in hotels and places where they had never been seen before. And yes, sir, to answer your question, if Mr. Christie doesn't win, they can forget it. And they owe that man an apology and trying to get him from being fat and all that. That is it. Well, I don't know what to say. I'll tell you. So, so will no America's in trouble and those places are the type of person I am with the gift that God gave me. If a person is driving a car down the freeway or the, the streets and hit somebody in the middle of the streets and then they said they ran off. My first question is, were they at the crosswalk? And then if, sir, if they wasn't at the crosswalk, I don't even want to hear that story anymore. So, because we have rules and regulations to follow. God gave us the Ten Commandments, and if you don't believe in the Ten Commandments, He gave you universal law. So you can read the universal law and put all that together. And if people aren't serious, I'm not the one to play with. I'm not. And people that used to didn't play with voodoo people because they considered them as being highly dangerous. Now, and most. Uh, well, let me ask this question then: Are you dangerous? Pardon? Uh, are you dangerous? Am I dangerous? Well, sir, anybody with the truth is dangerous in the Bible. When you go, when you don't do nothing but talk the truth, the people don't put you nowhere but in the crazy house. Yeah, they scared of dangerous people. Anybody that speaks the truth of God, those people, those poor kids got killed up there. And what state was that young lady that the kids got killed? Uh, the where the man came in the school and shot. Them. No, that was up on the East Coast. What state was that, uh, Mr. Scott? Uh, uh, Sandy Hook Elementary was that School. Connecticut? Yes. Was that Connecticut? Yes. Well, the first thing I wanted to know when the kids got shot up there in Connecticut, them poor children, uh, I needed to know were they, uh, was that the state that condoned two men marrying and two women marrying? And when they said that, then they're going to have plenty more like that, sir. All up in New York, all these tornadoes and all that stuff like that. All this is in the Bible. It's biblical. And these people aren't doing nothing now today than what wasn't done way back in the beginning of history. And that Bible lets us know it's going to even be worse, some of the things that they never did back there in that time. Those people were sleeping with one another, doing all kind of, all kind of stuff like that. And, sir, it comes a day you have to come clean. And if you're not clean with the Lord, you are not going to get a good, truthful message. Let me and ask you. Scared to tell people you got a problem. Let me ask you this, Doctor Bishop: If somebody wronged you, did something wrong to you, could you cause problems for them through voodoo? And would you? Well, sir, let me tell you this: As I told them years ago, back there. Uh, I, did I hit the wrong button? Can you still see me? You're, you're there. Okay. Uh, back in, uh, like I told them in Cleveland, when I just started out on the television, maybe my second or third television show, if you kill my dog, I will definitely murder your cat. And I believe in an eye for an eye and a two for a two. But you have to, God wouldn't give this type of gift that I have if I'm going to run around and do something to everybody. You have to pray over it and make sure Okay. And I'm not scared to stand up like those people were talking about Miss Obama and her $500 tennis shoes, uh, her $500 pair of tennis shoes. If that that woman, they they have to tell the truth. Republican Party, we gonna all have to tell the truth. That woman, she had a job making 250 to 300 thousand dollars a year before she came to the White House. And if she wanna pay $500 for a pair of shoes, that's her business, and wear them cheap Target dresses. No offense, Target. That's her business. And the other presidential ladies, of, uh, my favorite is Mama Bush, Father Bush's wife, most honorable, Mama Bush. And that one, all them people had $800,000 shoes, but they had those old Red Cross shoes, they call them, back in those days, and they didn't look like nothing. But we in for a big thing. That woman is out there planting a garden. The first thing she did was plant a garden out there in the White House yard to let people know, you watch, they're going to all be planting them between now and the ne over this next seven years. They're going to be planting them. Because yep. the government, the only way you can get to people is get them broke. And once they get broke and don't have no job and all of them have to go back to the house families, they wasn't even talking to one another, moving up in one house.
Dr. Bishop, you said something earlier on there I want to go back and say. Are you saying that FBI, the head of the FBI for so many years, J. Edgar Hoover, was murdered? Yes, sir. He did not die a natural death in his sleep. And the reason you could die, if he, all those times, May 1st is May Day. May 1st is also the Blessed Mother, the month of May in the Catholic Church. We honor the Blessed Mother, not giving her the honor we give God, but giving her her due honor. And uh, let me see, uh, just a moment, sir. Spirit is cutting off here. Uh, okay, that, uh, that, why would he die on May 1st of all the times he would be found dead? And he was sleeping with this one, and he's this and that. All that have nothing to do while everybody's trying to see what's going on with Miss Obama's $500 shoes and Mr. Uh, Honorable President Obama uh, talking about him and uh, uh, his birth certificate and all that. You People are off on the wrong. You can't see what's really going on for all of that. And that's what they have to do. They done connected everything now. The last, there are no more paper government checks on the street anymore. And that started February the 1st this year. And they got everything hooked up on the computer. They know where everybody is. And if the people that didn't fill out that last uh, census that came along, they gonna find out in the next year or two years, well, we don't have the check not gonna come one day or be in the bank one day. And they gonna call, well, we didn't have, you didn't fill out the census. Well, now, and then when they find out they didn't fill out the census, then they gonna look them up and believe me, these people are being hauled back. And you cannot get rid of nobody that you don't have documentation on them. You don't have their name and address or their name. Now, now, Reverend Bishop, who killed J. Edgar Hoover? Well, sir, I didn't get into that. And that was one thing that when I was reading, I never asked God, why and this and that but now i've been praying on that the last three years because the people want to know why when you a good spiritual person of god and you carry on his word you don't care why you take it on faith and do what he say do and it will pay off okay, well i do want to get in here uh, uh reverend bishop you you were kind enough to bring some voodoo items with you and i want to take a look at a few of those just describe what you have and put them up on camera there okay let me see uh, come just a moment. This is all. Just a minute, Mr. Scott here. Is this supposed to be here? Because I can't see my whole self. I hit the wrong. Okay. Um, one of the things that I'm doing now, collecting for uh, my veterans that I help and those serving their country that we will never know uh, if people are or not. This is a voodoo bag. And we have a voodoo a mojo bag, or what they call it. Some people call it a toby. And these mojo bags run anywhere from a hundred to ten thousand dollars, depending on what you want in it and what you want it for. And one thing that uh, the the more they are is depending on what stones and herbs you're putting in there. Some of them have diamonds and rubies. It just depends on, but one thing, a good mojo bag, if it doesn't have the mustard seed in it, it's not gonna work. That's your faith seed. And these are things they can have protection bags or uh, for money or whatever they need. And I believe in spiritual bathing. And uh, this is uh, like oils. I have one oil that I make it is called the Haiti High Power Bush Oil. And this oil people will either draw to you or get out of your way, whatever it is. And like I say, all these things, if you don't have the proper prayer and pray that prayer that goes with it every day, it's not gonna I work. I, I hope you've enjoyed our chat with the Reverend Dr. Lady Bishop as the sun was going down. She certainly gave us a lot of interesting information, whether or not you believe or not, you certainly have to say that the Reverend Dr. Lady Bishop is certainly a good guest, very entertaining person. Until next time, this is Scott Spears, headed for the dugout.